Hey, hey, everybody. This is Larry. This is day 30 of, of the September League Code Daily Challenge. Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord, and thanks for everyone for getting to the last day of the uh, the, the challenge. Uh, and today's farm is first missing positive. If you want to answer the way, find the smallest missing positive integer. Okay. So this is one of those, like, weird... Uh, in place algorithms. Uh, in general, this is a max if you don't count zero, I suppose. But but yeah, I mean, this is one of those things where uh, I don't know. It's just like a trick kind of thing, or like you have to know the the secret a little bit, or whatever the hack, the trick, whatever it is. And the idea is just basically sort this. It, um, Uh, sort this not sort this in order, but put the number into itself, uh, into its index. Basically, for for example, zero, you want to put a zero in the first, the zero index. You want to put the two in the zero second index, and so forth, uh, or the one in the first index and the second, or you know, um, and then the idea is then then you could go linear time after that, um, because every every number is going to move be moved at most once. And then you could just do a linear check to see what's the smallest missing number. It's um, it's a cute trick, it's a cute idea, it's a cute variation on the the cycle uh trick that comes up for a lot of random in place algorithm on lead code. Uh, I personally don't put that much value in these other than that it's a cute trick. But but eh, well here we are. Here's the first missing positive at the end of the uh, month. So yeah, it looks like. And maybe there's a commentary on, you know, the world right now where everything is missing some positive. But in any case, maybe that's just a terrible joke. Uh, okay. So, yeah. So, basically, we just have to... Uh, oh, and this is uh, max minimum exponent. I don't know how to spell it. Something like that. Uh, I might have to look that up. Okay, well, but that's what a max is for. Just search for max. But okay, so now we want to um, first we want to reorder the nums away. They put things in the right place. Uh, and the idea is that because uh, you have a, an array of l length n, it's either the number is going to be n, or sorry, from zero to n minus one, or maybe one to n minus one. Uh, because I think zero doesn't count, um, or it's just going to be n or n plus one or something like that, right? Like slightly out, outside the bounds. So let's go over there. Uh, for this problem, I'm going to assume that even though this is still in the case, uh, yeah, because zero is not a valid answer. So we'll just put. Um, we will try to walk you, but also put um, a number x into slot num sub x minus one. Okay, so let's do that. Um, yeah. Let's just say for index in range sub n, where n is equal to length of the nums. Well, how do we do it? Well, now we look at the if num sub index is equal to index minus 1, then we could just continue. Otherwise, we have other cases. Uh, we have with num sub index is less than zero mm. let's see so basically okay now we have num um, nums of index right uh some number x is equal to this number let's get it to the right place so but x is equal and we might we have to put a while loop here somewhere but but we'll figure it out uh and and so what is in X, right? And then we ask ourselves, what is in X? While <coughs> num sub index is not equal to index minus one, maybe. Uh, this is a little bit, I have to articulate it um, a little bit better probably. But, okay. So if X, or if num sub X minus one is not equal to num sub Oh, sorry, it's not equal to x. 
then well num sub x minus one is equal to x but before that we want to go uh, before is equal to num sub x minus one and then x is equal to before right uh, but we have to do some check we have to check that for example uh, x is within bounds right so and we can put in the while loop but I want to be more explicit in breaking out of the loop if x is uh, less than zero or we can yeah we could ignore it or if x is greater than or equal to n uh, or plus one because I think we can fit n in here uh, in the last element in fact uh, we break right and I think that's maybe all we need uh, I think for so one thing that I, I like to do for problems that I'm not super sure about I like to just get a visualization so let's uh, get a couple of test cases here and then print it out so that we can see what it looks like and then make adjustments if we need to and sometimes we do and sometimes, um, and for this case, I will kind of figure out what this should print out, right? In this case, it should print out actually 1, 2, and 0. Uh, in this case, it should print out 1, I don't know what it should be in the second element, but then 3 and 4. Yeah. And in this case, it should just, everything should replace, remain where it is. Um, yeah, and it looks like it, oh, oh. Uh... We need to get rid of, okay, so we did uh, have to remove this conceptually, but maybe it doesn't even actually matter. Uh, in theory, you want to move this to, like, say, a none if you want to do uh, a perfect bookkeeping. Yeah, let's do that because I, I think later on, if there was a two later on, then, you know, you might get this loop again, and it's just a little bit weird. Um, but, yeah. So num sub index is equal to none uh yeah uh okay and we do have uh index out of error because uh maybe i did a little bit too whatever uh because this loop has to be inside the while loop so i was wrong on that one. <laughs> oh, uh and in this case we just have to check that zero x is you know within the the loop so we inverted the statement that's what this is um, uh, and num sub x minus one is not none because if it's none then we break right let's again put, get the visualization uh oh hmm maybe that's not so fun then uh hmm okay so that is definitely not correct obviously but let's that's making sure that uh, this prints out the right one first okay um hmm. uh, i guess yeah maybe it's okay i think it should be okay it just means that there's more future loops and i've worry a little bit about um infinite loops but in the first case it just means one extra iteration so i think that should be okay um so now we can just go through the array and you can prove to yourself why that um, that the duplicate number is okay because if um, because if there's a two that exists an entire way, this would eventually be two anyway, right? Uh, and if it doesn't, then it doesn't. So then now we just go with for index and in range sub n. If num sub index is not equal to index minus one, then we turn index. No, I think that I got this wrong. Is index plus one? Yeah, we return index plus one. And then at the very end, we just have to return n plus one because that means that everyone, uh, and we should test that case actually. But yeah, that looks okay so far. So let's just try one, two, three, four, five. Uh, five maybe backwards and just some big numbers, though it doesn't, shouldn't matter. Um, yeah, and maybe duplicate letter, uh, empty cases, duplicate numbers, and so forth. Oops. Uh, and everything looks okay so far, so I'm confident-ish. Uh, so let's submit. Let's see if we want, we're okay. Ooh, no. How did that happen? 
Output is three. Huh. Okay, well that's a weird one. Now we we took out the print statement. Okay. Um hmm. and usually you get the wrong answer because the invariant you you think it's true is wrong. And in this case I guess there is. Um hmm. this is weird. So this should be a three, so why is it not putting it here? So the two is okay, and then one, and then three. Three should go there, right? <clears throat> huh. That is actually interesting. I um, hmm, Maybe there's a typo somewhere, or uh, a logic thing. Let's kind of look at it loop by loop. Hmm. So zero, one, two, three, four. Why is this nothing changed? Uh, so one, one question that I always get uh, or a lot often is why do birds suddenly appear? But also, Oh, did I have a typo here? I guess so. Yeah, I, okay. So it's just a minor typo. I mean, same with this one. Where, hmm, I, I think i just gone the other way with the plus one versus minus one. I didn't say it out loud clearly. Uh, yeah, and this is okay now. Um, let's print it out. But I think one one common question that I have is, um, why, why does my code not work? And to be honest, I don't have anything magical for you. Uh, it, when I look at your code, and I am able to solve it, say, uh, or like fix it, it's because one, either I made the mistake before, no, it's usually that's it. Either I made the mistake before, or I do the same thing that you see on me on stream, which is that I will print out everything and kind of look at the progression of everything, right? I would say debugging is an important skill. It is the skill that probably most relate to what you do at work. So definitely try to learn it, try to figure out. Um, instead of asking the question, why does my code not work? You should ask the question, why do I think my code would work? And in my case, I thought, okay, in this case, the invariance should be true. So this this part should work. Um, and then, I, you know, and then you could see how I changed what what uh, debug statement that I print. I look at it for, for problem for problem and I go, okay, so clearly the end state is not what I expect. Uh, I, I want this in my head and I, I should expect that the three should be here, right? Uh, and it wasn't the case before, though now it is. Um, so then I'm like, okay, th let's look at each iteration of the loop, right? And then you see me print X, and then and then you saw that, um, or maybe not uh, directly, but you saw that with the wrong code, and that's how I figured it out, was that, okay, you know, I print out the X and the nums, and I noticed that 3 wasn't here, and I was like, why is 3 not here? Well, 3 is not here because, and right here, the code is really short and easy. 3 is not here because this code ran, right? So that means that I had a typo here, uh, and that's why I can fix it that easily. And when you debug your code, try to go through each line uh, with your print statements and try to figure out, like, what you assume to be true and what you assume to be not true and then try to make sure that that's the case right with your expectations and the good thing about lead code and some other uh judges though not all judges is, is this case is that they give you the expected answer right so you can make up random cases like like i did and kind of um you know and and see whether they're right and i think that's a critical part about you know uh about growth as an engineer so definitely uh spend time in it uh and Anytime you see me look at your code and be able to figure it out in like one minute, it's not because I'm smarter than anyone or it's not because, you know, I'm better at looking at code. It's because I made the same mistake before. And so I remember, I go back, I'm like, oh yeah, this reminds me of something else I've done before. Um, so like, that's how I'm able to do it. And also like, you know, I, I finished first in the last contest, right? Which is only three days ago, and the same Larry had a typo, or, you know, had an easy thing where I put index plus one, right? So that's an important lesson there, that, like, you know, don't uh, don't worry too much about it, but, 
you know, just figure out figure out how you have that skill to be le- uh, uh, and you know maybe in the future be, uh, try to learn from it. And in my case, I'd be like, oh yeah, I, I think I just especially on stream, uh, I rushed it a little bit too much. I should have said it out loud and think about like what does index look like, right? If index is zero, why would I, you know, this would be negative one for it to match, which obviously didn't make sense. So that helps me visualize, for example. Uh, and I need to force myself to visualize that a little bit uh, instead of like, you know, just guessing a little bit, uh, which happens from time to time. Anyway, so what is the complexity of this algorithm? This is linear. Uh, you look at each cell at most once. Uh, even though this, there's a while loop, there's an inner while loop, uh, you can see that this condition will only be forced once per, or maybe twice because of the way we wrote it, uh, but constant number of time for each element, and you can prove that to yourself. Um, and then this one is obviously a linear scan. And so, yeah, and we don't really... I mean, this is an in-place algorithm, and I always complain about in-place algorithms because in most cases, in most APIs, you probably should not manipulate the input, and that's, that's really expected. And uh, and given the first missing positive, it's probably not a function that you would expect would change your input away into something funky, right? So definitely, eh, yeah, okay, it's all one extra space, but eh, it's probably not a good API to, like, mess around with your user's input, but that's besides the point. And that, but those are also the points that I would bring up maybe say in an interview as well. Uh, and in competitive, this would not come up because you're just like, I'm going to ignore you and then just put it in a hash table or something, right? But uh, okay. But yeah, but that's all I have for this. So this is, yeah, all of one extra space. But yeah, uh, hope y'all have a good month. Hope this month ended on a good note for you. It did for me. I finished first. <laughs> I mean, I know I sound a little braggy, but... It might be the last time I get a chance, so who knows, right? Anyway, um, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord, uh, and I will continue to do this for October, and I will see y'all next month. Uh, Bye-bye.